Hey guys, you may be shopping around for a good astrophotography lens for your camera. What if I told you there was a bunch of them that were under $100? Well, there is. And in this particular review, we're talking about the Super Takamar 200mm f4. It's an amazing vintage lens for astrophotography. I picked up mine for $45 on eBay. They generally go between that range and say $60. Let's talk about some of the specifics of it first before I tell you why it's so good for astrophotography. First off, it's set up on a 35 millimeter or full frame image format. It can be used with APS-C sensors also. It has five elements and five groups. A very common 58 millimeter filter size. It takes a lens mount, which is M42, there's an adapter for that and I'll show it to you soon. It has a maximum aperture of f4 and a minimum of f22. Six diaphragm blades. On a crop sensor camera you'll get between 8.2 degrees to 6.9 degrees field of view. On a full frame camera you'll get 12 degrees to 10 degrees. This was made back in 1965. I think it ran through 71 or 72. Really great lens very affordable. Now you could go out and buy say Canon's L series line and you get really high quality optics with that but that's just not realistic for most people especially if it's just a hobby. If you manage to locate one of these for sale make sure you get the uh, metal lens hood also. That's really good for boosting the contrast and keeping stray light out of it. highly recommend using it. This is your M42 to EOS mount adapter. These are under $10 on Amazon. But if you buy one of these M42 adapters, this will open up all worlds of possibilities for you because there are some really fantastic lenses, especially vintage lenses, that people overlook. These things are sitting in people's garages or at yard sales. They pop up on eBay all the time. It's ridiculous uh, the amount of money that people are spending for image stabilization, for autofocus features, which both are useless in astrophotography. You're shooting in all manual, and image stabilization is basically a no-no for astro. So definitely check out the kind of mount adapters you can get. The M42 is a really common one amongst some of the better vintage astrophotography lenses. So pick that up open up a world of possibilities as I said. Being all metal this is a relatively heavy lens something to consider you're gonna need a good mount for it. But the focus throw is really good on it it's it's long-winded and it stops on infinity which I find myself all the way over and then slightly back to get perfectly round stars. It has a click type aperture ring and people are on the fence on that. A lot of guys don't like it. And it reminds me of my Rokinon 14 millimeter 2.8. To me, it's a good thing because when you're out at night, especially in dark sky locations, I know that when I've clicked it all the way to the left, basically counterclockwise, that I'm at F4. And from there, I can feel my way in the dark to exactly where I need to be by the amount of clicks, which represent the stops. That's personal preference, and that's something I've noticed with lenses, with the uh, smooth aperture rings. I really don't know where I'm at without a flashlight, so that's a little bit of insight for you, maybe something helpful. At F8, you get really interesting diffraction spikes. Some people don't like that. Some people do. With camera lenses, relatively cheaply, you can buy something called a step-down ring. And what that does is allows you to close the aperture down without creating any diffraction spikes. So even between F8 and F22 with, with a lens for a camera, with a step down ring, you can avoid diffraction spikes altogether if that's something you don't like. So now for the fun part, what makes this so extraordinary as an astrophotography lens? Well, besides the price, if you stop it down to f5.4, you will get perfectly round small stars. 
it has very very low chromatic aberration and the biggest bonus of this lens is it's completely flat across the frame if you were to take a one thousand dollar apochromatic telescope no brand in particular ninety percent of the time you're going to need a field flattener with this lens the optics are so good on it and it's corrected so well that there's very very little astigmatism in the corners i mean it's almost completely flat until you zoom way in and the chromatic aberration is very minor it only appears on the brightest stars that you're looking at like sirius and vega and that sort of thing this is a fantastic lens for astrophotography as always i try to provide information about budget equipment that's accessible to all users I absolutely love this lens and I wanted to share it with you. I've got quite a few more that's coming up in the future that I'll be reviewing. I hope this information was useful and as always I wish you nothing but clear skies.